as we begin today i would take this opportunity to express my sincere gratitude to our visionary founder dr sarla devi billa our honorable chancellor madam shrimati jayashri mohata our honorable pro chancellor mr bk dalan moving forward with utmost pleasure and respect i would now welcome the patrons of the event professor dr gopal pathak vice chancellor sbu honorable ceo dr pradeep verma registrar professor dr vijay kumar singh i also warm, warmly welcome deans of different department dr sb dandan dr subani bara ma'am and dr rm jha sir I also welcome our mentor for the event Professor Sanjeev Bajaj Dean IDN CS also with profound sense of regard and honor I welcome our speaker Ms Aditi Saini Chakravarti head digital transformation Merico and I also welcome all the dearest participants the Indian e-commerce industry has been on an upward growth trajectory and is expected to surpass the us to become the second largest e-commerce market in the world the indian e-commerce sector is ranked ninth in the cross border growth in the world according to some of the reports indian e-commerce is projected to increase from 4% to 8% by 2025 india's e-commerce orders volume increased by 36% in the last quarter of 2020 with the personal care beauty and wellness segment being the largest beneficiary the e-commerce market is expected to touch the 84 billion us dollar mark in the upcoming times e-commerce is revitalizing consumer demand and catalyzing growth in india's retail industry thus the surge and expansion brings with it lot of opportunities making this area very crucial to explore and to address hence to discuss this very relevant and hot topic we have today with us the incredibly illustrious and distinguished miss aditi saini chakravarti miss aditi did her engineering from thapar university and mba from university of toronto She has 17 years of work experience in various brand marketing, digital and e-commerce roles with organizations like Nestle, PepsiCo, Adidas and Merico. She started her career as brand manager with Nestle Canada and handled various snacks, nutrition and legacy brands. She started the e-commerce function for Nestle India. She also headed e-commerce for PepsiCo. As Adidas marketing head, she was responsible for overseeing cross-country marketing and e-commerce for 77 countries, including India, South Africa, Turkey, UAE, Israel, and Egypt. She currently heads digital transformation for Merico. We also have today with us the very enthusiastic, exemplary, and very exalted person, Professor Sanjeev Bajaj. Dean ID and CS SBU he had worked with many renowned institutions and was a core part in institution building activity he is a great academician as well as a great administrator he is the man behind bringing in industry and academia together under one roof without further ado so i now invite our guest speaker to give her views on career and growth opportunities in e-commerce over to you aditi ma'am Thank you, Neetu, ma'am, and thanks for the very kind introduction. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I think uh, Neetu has said enough already, more than enough, actually. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just jump right into the topic. Uh, it'll be great if we can make it into an interactive session. Any questions you have? I think we have a small group, so let's have a more dialogue-based uh, interaction. But just from an introduction point of view, uh, you know, just to set it up, if you look at how e-commerce has evolved before we get to that let's start with what has changed in the last decade right so a lot has changed in india if you see in the last decade or so one access to cell phones right most people have smartphones nowadays if you look at the number of smartphones as of now that are active in india it is 760 million right and our population is 1.3 billion right so which means more than half the population technically has a smartphone i mean obviously some people have more than one as well uh, but largely access is a big thing that has happened in the last decade or so the second thing that has changed is internet and that is in a way an outcome of this whole cell phone and smartphone boom boom that has happened that how everybody at the tip of their fingers 
have an act have access to a device and as an outcome of that also data right and also internet right the, all the geo obviously is largely responsible for bringing a lot of plans which has made internet accessible to even like you know the most ruralest of the sectors in this country so that if you see from an internet penetration point of view where we stand around roughly the same numbers that i said some 800 million odd internet users is what we have combining both mobile desktop obviously 90% still resides on mobiles right along with that what that means is that you know there is a lot of open source development that is happening which is giving a level playing field to everybody right i mean you talk about anything there is an app for that you talk about you want to learn a new language there is an app for that you talk about you want to learn a new skill you want to learn photography you want to learn about you know what is happening in the world of fashion um or what is academically right now you know the kind of new articles that are being written research papers everything is there from google scholar is there to your uh, you know all the apps the plethora of apps that we have and everybody has access to that right so what does that mean so all these three things if you see what does that mean is that you know there is almost a new era that is dawning on india an era of aspirations right there is nothing which is you know which you can say that you know is not in your arms reach if you have the will and you have the ability and you have the motivation to make it happen everything is there in your hands which means that the country the way we are evolving the digital quotient of the country is significantly increasing and that is actually one of the things that i'm doing for marico as well that you know overall understanding how the digital evolution of this country is happening and how can marico as a business or like nestle as a business pepsico can be a part of this uh, this whole journey right so uh, coming on to now e-commerce right so now digital is obviously like let's say the base infrastructure is ready now when it comes to e-commerce you see there is obviously an upward growth trajectory that you are seeing in the industry typically any e-commerce uh, you know cycle be it any country the way it evolves it it starts with your books right so people start because people are very comfortable probably they get more comfortable getting a book because you know what you are going to get instead of buying it from the store i mean it's a standard product you know you start typically the e-commerce cycle starts with books then evolves to electronics right and then evolves to fashion and then finally it's fmcg right which is your fast moving consumer goods which is right now if you see we have in this country for e-commerce we have transition to books um mixed bag i would say because a lot of the industry overall the industry has moved online having said that not the best thing when you talk about you know the small mom and pop stores as well because technically you know those stores have to probably like you know that personalization where you some sometimes go and talk to a person understand how what book is good not good and all that stuff that we are obviously losing that at the same time obviously you know from a technology point of view it's obviously evolving so there is some benefit there is some merit over there as well there is convenience obviously of course and based on ai all the recommendations that get thrown on obviously that is there as well now from books to electronics also we have graduated so every time you see like you know there's one plus 6 gets launched or uh, one plus 7 gets launched iphone gets launched iphone 7 everything is all on online right and so electronics right now as an industry if you see for smartphones more than 75% of their business is coming from online from e-commerce right so significant shift from how it used to be done before fashion is the same story more than 50% of the business for any of your top fashion players as of now is coming from your mentra from your flipkart from your amazon you know purple nike etc and right now we are at a stage where FMCG is a core core focus of e-commerce where obviously the size of the price is also very big so if you see overall the retail industry in india are up is around 700 billion out of that odd 600 billion is what FMCG is right so that's why it's i mean once FMCG evolution happens then largely the ecosystem is more online than offline now you know when it comes about if we talk about the ecosystem right now It, right now as of now in ecom the size of the shopper base if we see it's around 220 million people right now shopping online still pretty small if you uh, put it in context of a 1.3 billion population 
but considering there are 700 people 700 million people who are more than that rather have access to e-commerce obviously this is evolving fast and furious and with you know obviously the whole uh, way the lockdowns have happened etc in a way it has led to a spurt in e-commerce as well um if you look at the number of sellers right now so more than 10 lakh sellers are there so while like i was saying there's a mixed bag that you know there are that certain personalization element of when you walk into a store and you talk to the person is getting lost at the same time from a business point of view the access that a seller has i mean obviously it's debatable and you know there are a lot of conversations go on uh, you know from political standpoint but if you see that you know the sellers that you have around 10 lakh sellers onboarded onto e-commerce means that a seller who's sitting let's say in uh, ranchi has access to a person who's probably sitting in uh, you know mumbai which was never the case before right so uh, from that regards if you see the industry is evolving in a way where it is also uplifting the way the business is done so and this should continue and if it doesn't obviously there's a problem we have at hand uh, but largely if this stays as the objective and the likes of amazon and flipkart continue to uh, help the sellers evolve along with them it's a win win situation overall as an as a country that we we, we obviously uh, grow as well so right now like i said the bulk of action is happening in personal care it's happening in grocery it's happening in pharma a lot of this action right now is happening from a uh, city geography point of view in tier 2 and tier 3 cities right uh, so overall like i said you know we are in that evolution curve more towards you know tapping into the full potential of e-commerce and you know like within the next 5 years or so uh, the size of e-commerce is expected to become around 200 billion usd in india right and like uh, neetu ma'am was already saying that you know we are by 2030 a decade or less than a decade we will be the second biggest market for e-commerce in the entire world right so immense potential absolutely immense potential and there are a lot of things that are also shaping up beyond this there is social commerce happening um a strong omni channel play is taking shape so those are some of the very niche new current trends but largely e-commerce has been established now as a business initially obviously there were thoughts about will it grow will it sustain not so now the model has been established now it's about expansion it's scaling and it's getting momentum but at the same time also evolutionary trends like e -com social commerce for me and omni channel they are the ones who are also taking shape so i mean just to kind of give you the, some opening remarks i thought you know i'll start off with this and obviously happy to hear what questions you have and then you know i can continue to take that along thank you aditi ma'am for such giving us such a valuable insights on the topic uh, uh, i would now invite professor uh, sanjeev bajaj sir to give his views on on, on this topic uh. Thank you, uh, Aditi and Nidhu, for such an elaborate uh, uh, view on the uh, topic. Uh, at Salabella University, we thought that uh, e-commerce is going to stay, and uh, as we all agree, that it is the fastest growing sector in the economy. So uh, why not uh, we uh, provide an opportunity to the students uh, of this particular belt, where uh, um, uh, the awareness related to e-commerce will be less and uh, the growth, growth opportunities are tremendous. So we at Salabella University have designed a program so that uh, uh, a student in this, uh, in this uh, region can benefit from this uh, fastest growing uh, sector of the economy. And uh, there are multiple opportunities for career and growth in this particular uh, field. Uh, uh, not only from uh, the uh, creation of website till uh, last mile delivery, there are hundreds of uh, you know areas where students can make their career, and there are tremendous uh, uh, upskilling and uh, uh, reskilling opportunities also available for the uh, existing uh, e-commerce employees, right? So people those who have already studied and they want to go for further study, they can upskill themselves or reskill themselves and can take an opportunity advantage of this uh, available opportunity so with this particular idea we thought that uh, 
uh, why not we uh, come uh, with a program starting with an undergraduate program and later on moving to a postgraduate and certification programs as and when we grow so uh, that would be the uh, best thing for uh, the students in this particular belt so uh, and in this regard we thought that uh, nothing better than uh, somebody who can actually uh, who has experienced the uh, e-commerce growth in her uh, career would be the right person to tell about what are the uh, opportunities what is the future uh, what kind of careers are available so uh, we thought of organizing this workshop i would welcome students to ask their questions uh, if they have any questions they can raise hand and then we can take up the questions and uh, i hand it over again to neetu ma'am to uh, continue with the uh, uh, session and uh, i'll be there to answer questions related to university and uh, uh, education at the university thank you neetu ma'am uh so aditi ma'am as you mentioned that the industry is evolving and the model has already been established uh in many reports it is mentioned that you know huge investment from global players like facebook facebook has invested in reliance geo and then uh, even google has uh, reported its first in uh, investment worth like 4.5 billion us dollar in geo platforms now this deal was also you know uh, followed by purchase of future group by reliance retail thus marking reliances or ambani groups entry into e-commerce space so ma'am why do you think you know what are the reasons for such magnanimous growth in or rise in this sector or e-commerce sector in india ma'am so um so there are multiple reasons i think some of them you've already alluded to so uh, one reason i think one big reason is policy right so if we see that you know from a government's point of view government is doing a lot right now when it comes to digital india initiative right there is beam that is happening there is startup india initiative etc so government is genuinely taking lead over here to make sure that uh, you know the uh, the old, whole e-commerce ecosystem evolves right so 100% fdi as an example is allowed uh, in e-commerce and that was still fairly recent compared to you know it was obviously not the case before right so overall you know when you know i think the vision and the way even from a political uh, let's say uh, environment point of view the way government is thinking about digital and transforming that that is shaping obviously that is having a big impact on e-commerce and also the e-commerce friendly policies etc then you know from a consumer point of view at the same time it's not just about you know obviously letting businesses uh, you know expand it's also about taking consumer interests at hand because you know the more the bigger the giants become like you know you talk about amazons and flipkart and you think about you know an average uh, person like me you know you'll, you'll not have the power to obviously let's say contest debate etc which is why the government is also looking at you know your consumer protection act acts etc to make sure the interests of consumers are protected and they're all revamping all this policy infrastructure which is allowing e-commerce to to grow as well they are keeping a tab at the same time they are trying to make sure they tap into the full potential of it so that is number one number two like i already said you know from a digital evolution point of view you look at the consumers right now at the click of a button you have everything at your hand right so uh, it is about what you really want to do with it and that digital infrastructure be it because of the smartphone uh, you know overall ecosystem evolving geo like you mentioned and you know the kind of data plans etc offer offerings which enables internet access accessibility the infra like you know you're talking about we used to have, be at 1g 2g wo gol ghumta rehta tha we used to keep looking at it now that's not the case anymore like you know you are at 5g you know you're going even one step higher right so all that is also taking shape so that's the second one the third one i would say is because of this their businesses have started taking humongous amount of interest in how can they tap into the potential of e-commerce which is automatically trying to give that momentum and scale to the ecosystem so most of the brands right now they are trying to uh, do dtc dtc is your direct to consumer right so it's not just about with partners like amazon and flipkart they want to do themselves create let's say the back end make sure that they have the right user interface so that they can tell their brand story 
in front of the audience versus letting let's say an amazon or flipkart dictate it right so any business you see right now you see uh, you see marico for example we have safola right there's a marico.safola.in website where we sell obviously not just safola but you know all the other entire range of marico is available um kama ayurveda forest essentials a lot of personal care beauty brand where every day you look at instagram you see you're targeted with another new beauty brand that has come up right um so there is a large amount of interest that is coming up from the manufacturing business point of view because they see that you know how this can help them later meaning like you know once you have the data once you have the consumer you know you can you can give them suggestions you can uh, you know create a relationship which is moving virtual so i think these three factors to me in a large extent are leading to this whole growth which is uh, panning out for e-commerce as an industry absolutely totally agree ma'am internet connectivity number of people uh, buying the products and you know number of sellers that have increased ma'am you also mentioned like i i just uh, said that number of sellers have uh, increased so we've also seen that the e-commerce industry have been like directly impacting micro small and medium enterprises in india maybe by providing them with finances or technology or uh, training and it has also had a favorable cascading effect on uh, other industries as well so ma'am in this regard what do you think the future hold for e-commerce in india the future right now if you see i think it's still like you know, it's pretty clear that e-commerce is going to uh, you know kind of lead the retail play very soon very soon but at the same time it doesn't mean we let go of the offline world i think the way forward is going to be more about omni channel right so you have to have an integrated approach where let's say you know as a person if i walk into a store i like an adidas shoe you know um i get interested i talk to the sales person right he explains me about you know what the shoe is about etc and then i go back home after that you know and when i'm browsing i get targeted with the same shoe because somewhere in the system or like you know recommendations which are like that right let's say i make a buy and then based on that buy obviously the recommendations are through so there is a cycle right and i browse through that i like something and then that feeds into the ai system to know that you know this is the kind of preference i have a preference for running shoes so and every time a new running shoe gets launched being a loyal consumer i'll get an email saying that you know the new run, running connect connection is live so please take a look right so this is a seamlessly integrated experience and that to me is how the future is going to evolve second like i already said you cannot let go of the sellers i mean your small mom and pop stores they are the ones who you have to take along with you if you want to make business sense in india otherwise none of the giants can sustain themselves till the time they make sure they nurture this so there are a lot of b2b companies that have come up as, as an example udan is one of the ones see the i mean very recently they joined the billion dollar club right so they they go and they educate the sellers they tell them this is the platform aap aise order kar sakte hain right you can see the pricing and on a sunday let's say or if for example if there is a supply constraint for example anitu ma'am you went to let's say the store right now and because you had a party at home chhota store hai aapne pure ka pura stock utha liya uska maggi ka right now he doesn't have maggi so now if the new person comes he has to wait till the next route of the next beat happens when the maggi truck comes and gives him the stock now he doesn't have to wait he can always log into udan he can order maggi and next day the maggi will be delivered right so that is a win win maggi is gaining in the process because they don't lose they didn't lose sale the person is gaining in the process the mom and pop store guy because he didn't lose sale and obviously as a consumer you have the availability and in the process udan is the one who's enabled everything obviously they also gain so you have to create a win win situation i think that's the way forward until that is done there is no way any business for that matter anybody in this country can sustain frankly uh rightly said ma'am that everybody or all whether the seller is there whether the consumer is there everybody has to create a win win situation so ma'am with this huge growth as we are discussing in this sector it has also been seen that you know e-commerce companies in india have actively hired 
during the pandemic in order to you know cater to the demand as covid 19 had accelerated the online shopping i was going through a research which was by nascom so they reported that uh, you know there was 22% year on year growth in e-commerce workforce in 2020 and the giants like you know amazon and flipkart they had hired around 1.4 lakh employees as their seasonal or contractual jobs during this year so ma'am in this regard i mean uh, what do you think what are the job opportunities in e-commerce especially if a person is a fresher or just graduated with a degree in uh, e-commerce what do you think are the job opportunities for them ma'am yeah so i mean see there are a lot of job opportunities right now if you think and the way if you imagine if we are going to be the second biggest market in the entire world right when it comes to e-commerce obviously there is significant potential for people who join the bandwagon early right um so uh, if you see where those jobs are so there are multiple areas right so there is there is let me break it down into two parts right there is a product there is product e-commerce and then there is services e-commerce right so within product e-commerce you have manufacturers manufacturers like nestle uh, pepsico right all the your unilever etc they are creating an infrastructure where you know they have teams they have the analytics team support infrastructure to make sure everything for amazon as well as like i said direct to consumer they are trying to do to make sure everything like you know they are tapping into e-commerce potential so right that is one leg second leg is within product if you see you have your e-commerce players like amazon flipkart etc right udan etc so uh, or nike for example right so these are your large e-commerce players so this is from a product point of view like again now in services then you have your service companies like your urban clap or your a lot of your beauty let's say uh, saloon services etc are happening online or like you know plumbing services etc right your your base services along with those base services then you have fintech right you have fintech companies which are you know micro financing companies so what i'm trying to say is every piece of the puzzle if you see from a product point of view or a service point of view there will be a vertical of e-commerce which you will see which is flowing through everything which means opportunities in the area of supply chain where you are managing let's say supply chain for let's say an e-commerce player you are managing the warehouse of the e-com player it's a lot of it is automated but at the same time you know you still need people last mile delivery like sanjeev sir also mentioned right along with that you have your analytics function right where you are trying to make sense of the data that is available to make sure you give the best thing to the consumer and in the process you make profit as well then you have your marketing see at the end of the day it's selling only happens when you have a strong brand i mean amazon still sells that you know we have prime amazon still talks about you know rakhi ka recently they have had a very beautiful campaign recently they've launched right so they are trying to build that brand that you know we are about customer service right so that's the positioning that they want to go after so there are jobs in marketing as well and then obviously there is tech also where you know you have to create the right ui ux you have to make sure you know you resolve consumer queries which means that you have the customer service as well looped in so there are there there is enormous potential from all regards because e-commerce is going to touch pretty much every aspect um i mean in terms of product industry as well as well as service industry as well Yes, ma'am. So, ma'am, in continuation with the same question, you know, what are the skills or competencies these firms or these e-commerce firms look for in in their uh, prospective employee or in any candidate when they are uh, making a hiring decision? So, um, see, I'll tell you. Uh, I mean, from personal experience, what I look for in a person, right? When it comes to digital, if I have to hire somebody, I look for number one, he has to have a learning mindset. because this field is changing so fast the person needs to have the mindset that you know i'm going to soak it up all right there's going to be new there's going to be evolving i want to learn more i want to learn more i want that mindset number 1 number 2 it's about being flexible you know you can't say that okay this is the plan i had in mind now this is what i'm going to walk the line on because you have to try experiment 
some experiments are going to fail you have to be okay with failure as well you have to be comfortable with that and you'll pivot you'll have to try to you know again scale up uh, using the experiments that were successful right so the person to me three things at least from my perspective what i feel are important are one always you have to look for learning number two you have to be open to failing right and number three you have to have the flexibility to change and adapt to the new environment so to me that but you know from a hard skill point of view if you ask me a lot of people think that you know okay it's it's all very scientific it's very science it's very very data a lot of it to be honest and unfortunately so i have to say is coming becoming very data because i am a marketer at uh, at heart so obviously like you know it's not just about data it shouldn't be about data and it's not because when you talk about touching the cord of the heart of a consumer you still need to think about that data but at the same time extrapolate it and take your gut into account that ha huh, based on this i feel this is what the consumer insight is you know the consumer is still looking for an emotional as well as a, a connect which is uh, more let's say uh, convenience oriented you know making sure timely delivery happens etc right so there are both parts to the puzzle and hence it is important to have a uh, a balanced mindset right between your left brain it's not all left brain oriented it's between left and right you have to have the right balance to make sure that you are successful in this uh, space totally agree ma'am especially when you mentioned about the soft skills that you know you have to be open to failure adaptability and you you should be open to learning as well so ma'am in in one of the interviews that i was reading the vp of amazon india had also stated that you know with their expanded network they were looking forward to creating thousands of job opportunities with competitive pay so ma'am what kind of salary can be expected for a fresher or you know after graduating with a degree in e-commerce so what kind of salary can be expected uh neetu ma'am to be honest it's a very hard question to answer right because it's like any like any other field it just varies quite significantly uh what i personally believe in just follow what your heart tells you if you enjoy something you will be good at it and the salary everything just follows i mean seriously i mean that's that's my core core principle and that's why i say that you know it's about learning you have to soak it in focus on your learning focus on enjoying what you are doing and salary has to be a by product of it so and again it can vary across industry across you know different brands etc so you can't put a number to it and you can't put a number to happiness and enjoyment frankly truly said ma'am we can't put number to happiness so ma'am like you know we are seeing uh, many startups are coming up people uh, nowadays they are taking degrees and you know moving they want to uh, move on to their own ventures especially millennials or the gen z that, that as we call them are the most entrepreneurial uh, generation that we have today so in this context uh, is it possible for someone to establish their own business or start up their own venture after taking a degree in e-commerce in the similar field ma'am so i mean i have to say i have to admit that i'm very envious of this generation when it comes to these millennials they are very risk taking super smart people right and when it comes to e-commerce in particular the good thing about e-com e-commerce is uh, that the cost of entry the barrier to entry is very low right because all you need is a a good idea right you have a good idea you can create you know there are a lot of off the shelf solutions available when it comes to let's say tech right you can lift off from there you know when it comes to marketing again there is like your facebook kind of uh, sorry a facebook kind of uh, you know uh, google facebook etc a lot of marketing platforms pretty established in digital marketing you know all of that is also there right um so for this generation especially i feel i mean this is the only part i feel that you know i miss i wanted to be a part of this generation for only for this reason the heart to experiment and the love for trying new things is humongous in this generation and the good thing is the ecosystem when it comes to tech when it comes to ecom it really supports that uh, that adrenaline 
so uh, try it i mean that's what my recommendation to everybody would be is try experiment fail but that fail you should failure you should take it with the with the spirit of that yes i tried and i failed i mean otherwise how would you even know that you know finally when you're successful what failure tasted like thank you ma'am so my this question uh, my next question uh, possibly sanjeev sir can uh, answer that sir like as we are seeing that you know there are different set of students some set of students they want to take up jobs some set of students you know they want to start their own ventures now there is third set of students who would want to you know take up higher studies or higher education so many students generally feel that to establish themselves in any field they want to get into higher education and it is necessary for them so what are the options of higher education if somebody has graduated with a degree in e-commerce see uh, dr ritu as we were discussing and uh, aditi ma'am was uh, telling that there are multiple areas in the uh, field of e-commerce right and each area uh, can be further divided into a uh, niche area and uh, as the students think of and this generation is uh, you know uh, believes in both they not only uh, believe that they want to become uh, master of all trades but they uh, you know they also want to become uh, uh, means we were used to have that okay jack of all trade will not work only master of one trade has to be there but now the present generation thinks that they have to be jack of all trade as well as master of multiple trades right so with this particular thought process in mind that if i want to become master of multiple trades or maybe i want to create a niche so there are multiple domains where students can have uh, higher studies right to the extent of phd or if they want to go to uh, go for a post doctoral they can choose an area and they can specialize so they can start with a simple uh, undergraduate degree in e-commerce then they can go for a post grad in a specific area like uh, i have done my bcom in e-commerce and after that i want to specialize in logistics and supply chain so i can do my mba in logistics supply chain i want to have you know uh, a masters degree in data analytics so i can go for that particular field so that i can support the e-commerce trade as uh, aditi ma'am was saying that if i walk in a adidas store and the next day i see on my uh, you know uh, linkedin and uh, uh, facebook profile or maybe google only adidas advertisement so that is a, uh, a specialized area where artificial intelligence is being used a lot of data crunching is being done right so that is another area where people can uh, specialize right third area could be like a uh, uh, specialization where your skills would be more important rather than your academics would be important like merchandising so uh, what to sell on a uh, e-commerce site is also an a, uh, you know huge challenge for the e-commerce uh, uh, um, uh, outlets right everything and anything does not have a potential and may not be sellable or may not be having a shelf life to sell so what to sell and uh, how to promote it is there an another area so uh, say for example digital advertising is one area where they can specialize so there are uh, um, uh, plethora of areas where students can go for uh, higher studies not only in the e-commerce but any area which supports e-commerce right so logistic is one as i told you data uh, analytics is one business analytics could be third then uh, advertising and uh, product promotion could be fourth digital marketing can be another area uh, marketing and uh, you know uh, as uh, also ma'am said that there has to be a uh, hybrid model where we are uh, looking at both the e-commerce as well as the in-store buying so uh, like we have lens card where you can uh, choose a particular product uh, on uh, website and you can take a delivery of that product uh, at a lens card store and vice versa also possible so uh, this is how you can uh, do another model which is coming up is the uh, as uh, i have experienced like uh, i went to a bata store and uh, they had uh, they did not have that particular product which i saw on their website but they are ready to accept the order and they said that sir by the evening i'll deliver you that product so how they are doing that is through the again uh, they are not uh, they have their internal network and uh, in ranchi area whatever is store is having that particular product is available to every uh, outlet so if say uh, lalpur store is not having that particular product but it is available in the ranchi road store so by the evening that product will be available at the ranchi road store uh, sorry from ranchi road store to uh, lalpur store 
and i can take delivery of that particular product so this is how the e-commerce is evolving and not only in products but services category also the e-commerce is huge so uh, there is a specialized area of a study called e-services marketing right so service marketing could be one area where students can have a further higher study and digital marketing is now the uh, booming uh, like anything so uh, e-commerce related with the uh, digital marketing could be an area as uh, aditi was talking about fintech companies then another big market is edtech companies right the uh, uh, institutions and companies offering the education upskilling and reskilling products so marketing in that area so a uh, e-commerce coupled with a normal marketing could also be a, uh, a field of higher study so uh, you know the market is wide open for students to go for far, further study okay okay sir. thank you sir thank you uh, ma'am my next question to you is like there are so many uh, subjects and courses available so many institutions that are coming up with various uh, uh, courses and uh, students also out of pressure or because out of their own interest also because out of fashion also they choose randomly many a times many different courses and subjects mm -hmm. so ma'am what do you suggest you know who should go for a course in e-commerce who should take up e-commerce as their career or who should you know get into this uh, sector see i mean i think like i already said na neetu ma'am uh, it's about it's about figuring out what you enjoy right if you let's say you enjoy marketing and you enjoy technology marketing then probably e-commerce becomes obviously a, uh, a a field where let's say you know you try to go for specialization like sanjeev sir was saying for digital marketing right if you enjoy uh, consumer insights right you like to understand consumer you can still do it now the benefit is that you have a lot of data at your hand so you can understand the data first and using that data you can generate consumer insights you can have let's say even like online blogs you can study you can understand the sentiment the consumers have right so um that would be another uh, place right same same with supply chain let's say what excites you is so as an example when i was growing up um, i used to be i used to be an early riser all the time so i would wake up at like 4:30 5 am in the morning and because i used to go from a morning run i would uh, i see that you know the newspaper guy would always come at the same time right and he would be throwing newspapers into all the houses and i always wanted to be that newspaper wala guy but i was never allowed to do that <laughs> because my parents will are ladki newspaper thodi bechegi subah 5 baje i mean that doesn't go but to me that was still super exciting i would get my exercise plus i am you know uh, uh, selling newspapers or like you know giving people let's say the access to news to me that was like the larger objective and at the same time i'm making pocket money which gives me my independence as well right so uh, to me i think what i what i'm trying to say is that you know if there is any particular element where it's like you know you have to understand your orientation what you enjoy and if you enjoy that you know let's say you enjoy connecting tech and marketing digital marketing has immense scope, scope over there you enjoy understanding the consumer behavior right through let's say data but at the same time building on those consumer insights to take it to a larger overarching level both again from a left and the right brain emotional point of view as well as much as cognitive so there is another you know obviously uh, you know uh, element you know you, you can design your career around it so i think it totally depends on on your self discovery of who you are and if you truly understand that you know this space where you know you let's say enjoy understanding human emotion understanding data and using that to understand human emotion you do consumer insights you like selling you can do selling i mean yeah, let's say you know you as a part of uran let's say or like you know for example when i was with pepsico or when i started off with nestle you know amazon was my first client right so i would go and technically i'm selling Am nestle ka brands to amazon saying ki aap becho yahan pe and all that stuff this is you know what margins we'll give you etc so if you enjoy selling there is scope over there as well so totally depends every aspect like i said e-commerce is going to touch you need to understand what you like what you enjoy just focus on that and things will fall in place 
ओके ओके थैंक यू मैम सो मैम सिमिलर इन लाइन विद दिस क्वेश्चन माय नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज लाइक यू नो इन इलेवेंथ एंड ट्वेल्थ पीपल जनरली टेक सब्जेक्ट्स आर्ट्स साइंस कॉमर्स कॉमर्स ऑफ कोर्स यू नो पीपल कैन मूव टू ई कॉमर्स दे वुल नॉट बी सो मच ऑफ कंफ्यूजन बट इज इट वायबल फॉर अ ट्वेल्थ ग्रेड स्टूडेंट हु मेजर्ड और हु हैड स्पेशलाइज इन आर्ट्स और यू नो हु हैड टेकन अप साइंस to pursue a bachelor's degree in e-commerce will it be feasible or uh, is is it like uh, do you suggest that 100% in fact i find there is a deficit of people who have an arts orientation and uh, are into the field because a large chunk of people that you find over here are again who are more into let's say tech and more cognitive more rational thinking etc uh but even let's say for from digital marketing right my uh, clients when they talk about they talk about leads they talk about numbers but marketing is still as much of an a science as much an art right so you still have to have the right creative you have to have the right expression you have to hit the right chord with the consumer to make sure the person actually gives you the lead at the end of the day so yes numbers is one part of the story but so is art and so is human behavior uh and somebody who can put it together again with the arts orientation i find you know people can actually uh, you know do that very well hamari generation mein again kya ek doctor banoge aap ya engineer banoge there is no third scope right <laughs> that's not the case anymore i mean there's so many options available i mean specialization into the field of e-commerce to you know anything like uh, sanjeev sir was saying ed tech it's taking such a huge shape right now uh so you can do what you feel you want to do everything is at your access but you need to know that this is where your heart lies and you continuously nurture that and uh, ma'am like when we were discussing a previous question related to skill and competency you also mentioned about some hard skill like and we now know that e-commerce is very much technological oriented and data and so many apps are there so many applications are there so uh, is it important to learn computer programming if you want to pursue e-commerce or if you want to pursue any sort of degree in e-commerce do no. students or do anybody uh, needs to learn computer programming no okay. no no okay. you, you don't need to learn uh, computers at all in fact but if you have a, a mindset in which like again you have to understand numbers to an extent but at the same time you should be able to uh, carve out stories using that numbers right so if you can do both these elements together it's not that you should know programming per se uh, in certain spaces like obviously analytics for example where you have to do big data data all that stuff it obviously helps um but in certain places like for example for me at least you know from a marketing point of view uh, i mean when i look from a sales hat when i have to go and negotiate and you know look at my margins and numbers etc then definitely it uh, helps but if i am looking putting my marketing hat on you know it is more about again what will the consumer say think how will this evolve how will this relationship flow how will the advocacy the word of mouth flow right so um as a business manager i think again both aspects uh, are important if you are going into analytics data that you know like i said the rational cognitive aspects are important if you are going into consumer insights let's say more emotional aspects are important or creative strategizing creative idea generation of this story aspects are important so i i don't frankly hire i just based on if you have a btech degree or you have a let's say a bcom degree everybody from if you have a strong bachelor's degree you understand your subject that means you have the power to pick up and learn that is the orientation i need honestly and all of us are evolving in digital that's the beauty of it so we we'll learn together Okay, ma'am. Ma'am, last question from my side, and then we'll open the discussion for the participants as well. So, ma'am, this COVID nineteen pandemic has literally disrupted the way people used to buy products and services. The existing norms of social distancing and mobility restricted mobility of individuals have made the consumer move towards e-commerce. People have generally switched from going to shops, supermarket, shopping malls. Now they have started, uh, you know, uh, shopping from online. portals be it a general commercial product or a branded goods so this e-commerce 
sector has also responded very positively and has taken up the opportunity presented to them so do you think this e-commerce sector will grow in future once the pandemic has passed and everything is normal do you think this is going to survive or do you think it is going to expand once things are back to normal no see no since i work in the sector i have to say it is mono but <laughs> i mean just kidding <laughs> Uh, but no, seriously, I think what's going to happen though is obviously there's going to be some level of uh, growth flattening that will happen, which means that the pace of growth might just slow down a little. Uh, but uh, again, this is also industry specific. So, for example, if uh, we are talking about FMCGs, now right now we don't have access to you know even I to the nearest market. I don't uh, go out. I mean, you know, all of us are trying to be careful. Um, but once the access is there, let's say if you're already there, let's say, uh, you know, in a mall, you see something, you'll just probably buy over there, right? So uh, obviously there is going to be some transition back into like the real world that's going to happen. That's natural, right? Uh, but largely when you see that, you know, how convenient it is for the products that you now have already latched onto, you know, a Maggi masala is what a Maggi masala is or an Amul Tetra pack or an A plus milk is what it is. Why would you want that you have a packet of milk ke dho ke ke ghar pe when somebody can actually deliver it to your doorstep, right? So convenience is there. Assortment is the second angle, which is why I think it's still going to st sustain. Uh, so right now, if you see, I mean, if I am looking for uh, going back to, let's say, an Adidas shoe, the entire range is available right now online. Even if I walk into the store, the store might have certain limitations. Like Sanjeev sir was saying that, you know, product yes, true, they will deliver it to you. But I mean, if you know what you want, you'll probably just uh, press it over there, like, you know, on your mobile phone so that, you know, it gets delivered on Jake, like, you know, who's going to go and get it, right? So the assortment that is there, the convenience uh, that is there, you know, so those are some, let's say, behavioral changes that will happen in the, in the consumers because of these uh, these capabilities because of which they will like to obviously uh, continue to use it now maybe the usability obviously goes uh, down a little as an outcome of it obviously the uh, the business growth obviously slows down a little but it will continue to grow it, it might not go, grow at 36 percent how it happened this year it probably grows at 10 percent or 15 percent but second Largest economy, and I, since I started e commerce over here, I remember my days at Nestle when I started. I came to Nestle India, started the business, but the size of the business means what? Zero, right? Zero, no business happening. For a company which has 10,000 crores of business, out of which 30,000 crores, uh, sorry, pardon me, 3,000 crores comes out of Maggie as a overall business. So, when, if you remember, Maggie went out of business because of that whole issue that happened. A regulatory issue was there and after that we were ready to bring Maggie back uh, so that that time I was leading e-commerce and I spoke to the uh, business head Martin at that time he was a uh, you know he was from Italy pardon me sorry from France right so I, I said that you know why don't we launch Maggie on e-com he literally laughed at me he said like you know I have a 3000 crore business Aapka business matlab zero crore hai. Launch bhi karunga, reliance ke saath karunga na. Why will I launch on, uh, on Amazon or uh, Snapdeal? I went back, I worked out the numbers, I spoke to Snapdeal and Amazon, I got the best deal. How? You know, your, the amount of marketing media that these players were ready to give to launch Maggie at that time, there was no way Reliance or anybody was able was ready to match that. Also, the second thing is from a distribution point of view. I deliver to one warehouse all the Maggie. The person, let's say you're sitting in Ranchi, the uh, warehouse in Delhi has Maggie, which is the first lot of Maggie. They'll make sure that the person gets it, right? So that accessibility was also not there. I mean, if I deliver to, let's say, a, a modern trade outlet, they will take time to obviously transfer to like, you know, their other warehouses. Pe aapka fit stock shelf pe jayega, fir shelf se aap so there's a 15 day lag that you have, which is not the case over here. For those reasons, Nestle decided, fine, we'll launch it on uh, actually Snapdeal. Uh, it so happened. Um, and, you know, we went all out, you know, Snapdeal gave all the media. Within five minutes, we sold one lakh boxes of Maggie and each box was like 10 packs of Maggie, right? Five minutes in the entire country, one lakh boxes, right? So that 
to me again tells that you know how this feel and that time covid was not there i mean so that was like you know obviously the initiation stages but once now you're used to this that you know something somebody just comes and delivers why would you want to do that so there will be some behavioral elements that will stick with us some we'll go back to which will obviously have an implication in the pace of growth but overall the growth is going to continue and i'm not saying this purely because i take care of e-commerce but i think largely that's what i think is going to happen no no ma'am totally agree with you like some of the things we are really gotten used to it now i don't feel like going out and buying stuff which i can readily you know order it online so i think absolutely uh, you mentioned it correctly uh, now we are opening the discussion for the for our participants if they have any questions any queries any doubts they can raise their hands i have uh, allowed access to a mic to every uh, one who can who want to ask a question and uh, if you have any questions related to uh, if you have to ask to aditi ma'am or me then we are ready to take questions great so it looks like dr neetu that you have asked all the questions from the side <laughs> of the students and probably they do not have any doubt in mind so uh that's uh, fine i just wanted to add to what uh, aditi uh, was just uh, telling that uh, e-commerce is not limited to uh, uh, the you know current pandemic situation it is has it has brought a uh, brought a change in the way we do things for example i remember uh, i was the only person in my entire college uh, who was uh, booking tickets on irctc through a credit card or online otherwise my rest of the 50 colleagues or 60 colleagues those who were there in uh, raipur with me they would send the pune from the uh, college or university or probably they will visit or somebody from the family will go stand in a queue and book a irctc ticket uh, maybe indian railway ticket i would call right but now you see the uh, change in uh, uh, behavior even for the bus Uh, i would say if not in the villages but in the uh, almost all towns you will find that even for booking bus tickets the present generation would not like to go to the counter and book the ticket directly rather every bus which travels interstate or uh, any good uh, company which is running a volvo or a scania or maybe a, a tata luxury bus you will find that there is a, a web address given for booking online tickets right even you don't want to pick up your phone and call the bus counter that bought boss book a ticket for me right you simply either if you are not accustomed to say uh, red bus or something then uh, you remember that there was a uh, there is a site or you will just google it uh, bus from ranchi to gaya and you will find out who are the travelers who are taking online booking and you book a ticket so this is all about change in habits so uh, like uh, before the zomato ipo uh, the uh, uh, promoters of uh, uh, zomato were saying that uh, you normally in a month eat 90 to 120 meals at home right and even if you change your five meals to an online meal that means in a month only if you change to five meals you uh, bring them through zomato it is not much still you are uh, taking your 85 to 115 meals at home cooked at home but for zomato that five meals which get transferred from cooked at home to an online order would create a huge difference imagine the uh, total population and converting five meals to an online meal order and look at the volume even if one third of the population uh, adopts that practice you can look at the volume of the business they will get right so e-commerce is going to stay there it is going to grow the only thing is that the uh, different channels which will be there right so maybe for uh, 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 buying a uh, shirt for me i would like to have a look and feel but if i trust a brand that okay if i am buying a color plus shirt this is uh, there is no the quality there is no compromise with the size and the company is ready to provide me a ready replacement without any cost then why do i uh, not choose online right so uh, this thing is going to stay uh, the product category may differ from person to person or city to city but uh, e-commerce has a very huge future and uh, the opportunities which are coming in e-commerce area would be tremendous 
so uh, my suggestion to uh, the upcoming generation would be go for something which is going to grow do not go for something which is going to die have you imagined that like i am a foodie and i love uh, you know uh, food from different part of the country so yesterday only in ranchi if i ask somebody that okay i want uh, a gujarati kachori i may not find so what i did i ordered it with ana mithai wala and he delivered from surat right imagine within 3 days i get uh, the gujarati kachori from surat in sitting at ranchi and at no extra cost 400 rupees kilo surat mein hai 400 rupees kilo mein mujhe mil rahi hai but still i can get the ingredients for a fresh idli from chennai why not <laughs> so that's all from my side uh, nitu rightly mentioned sir absolutely i totally agree with to this sir so we we really thank you aditi ma'am for your insightful discussion for such an interactive and thoughtful discussion we really thank you for uh, showing so much of zeal and avidity while answering all our questions uh, i now request ms kasturi hazarika placement coordinator sarla billa university to propose the vote of thanks over to you kasturi ma'am good afternoon everyone It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks today. I, on behalf of Sarla Villa University, extend a very hearty acknowledgement to our honourable speaker, Ms. Aditi Saini Chakravarti, for her inspiring words with her presence. The way in which she explained this subject was extraordinary. Despite of your busy schedule, ma'am, you took time to answer questions of these budding minds about e-commerce. Thank you so much, ma'am. On behalf of SBU family, I give. a really heartfelt vote of thanks to you ma'am today we had opportunity to hear your thoughts your thoughts have enlightened our minds and definitely will help our students showing them a direction in their career making especially your inputs about digital evolution how it helps to develop e-commerce business about b2b companies working styles how to develop buyers and sellers relationship job opportunities multiple areas like uh supply chain management analytics function and many more especially about your thoughts in higher education how to develop their mindset to go and have flexible mindset to develop their job means um, everything uh, possibility to making career in e-commerce field ma'am indeed your words have inspired our students a lot we have fortunate to be assisted by professor sanjeev bajaj sir dean id and ces you have been a constant support and you have given us lot of encouragement sir special thanks to admission department to make the event successful a big thank to our organizing team last but not the least i thank you all the students for showing their interest in this program thank all of you for your encouraging participation have a great evening ahead over to you nitu ma'am thank you kasturi ma'am uh, aditi ma'am thank you so much uh we now close this session for today yes yeah, sanjeev sir you want to say yeah, something before we finish yes. i would like to inform all the participants that the feedback form is available on bit.ly at the uh, slash sbu feedback and uh, uh, giving your feedback you can uh, generate your workshop participation certificate so uh, do fill up your uh, uh, feedback form it is very important for us to understand uh Uh, did you like the program or what changes we can incorporate in the next event thank you